yes, this, I am not talking about this until it actually happens. <laughs> okay, so um, I actually found out when um, earlier in season one, um, I got um, taken aside by John Steinberg and he said, just to let you know, when you see episode six, you're not actually dead. And I was like, oh, okay, good, thanks. <laughs> um, so that was the, the sort of initial thing. And then they told me that, okay, we're going to hold you a little bit and uh, save your reveal and then bring you back in. And I was like, okay, cool. So, um, yeah, for, for me, like the start of season two shooting was, was pretty quiet. You know, I got brought out here and was, I had some family out here. So it was actually quite nice. I just sort of out in Cape Town and had some family and came in to do the odd shooting day when I'm just like that. <laughs> ah, dehydrated or on a beach somewhere. Um, and then, uh, yeah, so for me, it was, I was so excited to get back into being Billy and, uh, you know, being the way he is and stuff and having these, these, all these new uh, incentives and um, kind of, I don't know, like just feeling that he's, he's not necessarily all he seems anymore and there's more to him, you know, it's quite, quite cool for me. Well, and when did the rest of the cast find out? Probably the same time. Probably the same time as you. Probably around, yeah. general knowledge, yeah. yeah. You know, so yeah. Well, we always knew he was going to be back. Oh. Ah. So they just basically rolled you in sand at three on beach. Yeah, pretty much. It's kind of yeah. Awesome. yeah, yeah. So I want to talk a little bit about Mr. Uh, Mr. Scott's relationship with Eleanor and how far back it goes and how it's sort of shifting this season. Yeah, I mean, it goes back all the way back to when you know she was a, a young girl and uh, you know he he worked with the father initially and uh you know and then as she was when, when the father left he, he he took over the the running of the business for the family and um and as you know it was like a surrogate father really to uh to eleanor so that relationship is a very deep and very strong one and there's a one of of, of 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 mutual respect and certainly mutual understanding and uh when she you know once it was her time to to take control that's exactly what happened and he allowed that to happen and uh and as sort of uh was in a way, the sort of de facto power behind the behind the throne, as it were, you know, overseeing what was going on and making sure that everything was uh, was right. And it's shifted a lot. I mean, it, through I mean, I've seen at this point um, most of season two, right? And it really, really changes. Yeah, and it changes. That relationship changes because the world has changed. Nassau is no longer what it what it was, and so. Um, uh, you know, Mr. Scott now has to try and find his way within this new within this new world, uh, because Eleanor is one aspect, and that family were just one aspect of who he who he is, and 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 and, and what he needs to to actually do. Yeah, well, I was actually thinking about backstory because we get a little bit of I won't say anything because that's later in the season. We mm -hmm. get a little bit of Billy's, but how much backstory did both of you come up with yourselves, and how much were you told by the writers? What do you want to answer that first? Uh, yeah, um, well. So I came in, when we first got here, we sort of sat down with, with John Steinberg and um, he was interested to know what we thought about our backstories and stuff. And I sort of came in with my own ideas and he really liked them and stuff. And um, so I, I sort of said I'd be quite interested if it was, because it was, I was thought, because this relationship between Gates and Billy, I was like, what's that all about? And I was like, okay, maybe he was, I like to think that, you know, Billy got brought onto the ship as like this young kid or something and he was, um, just sort of, you know, um, what's the word, uh, mentored by, by Gates and just brought up in this world. And that's why he's so good at what he does, because he's been brought up by this guy who just knows this world inside out. Um, and uh, and it, it's nice because, like we say in, in later on in the, the story, we sort of see a little bit of how that might have happened. And then, you know, there's this uh, quartermaster called, called Gates who has, you know, brought him up. So yeah, he went over these things when we talked about it, and it's great for an actor to get that with the creator of the show and go, let's combine our ideas of you know what this character is and and make it real. And what about you? Yeah, I mean, I did a lot of the backstory. You know, uh, for me, it came out of the research that I had done. <clears throat> you know, trying to find uh, where these where this character uh, was place was, and uh, you know, for me, the, the 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 slave narrative is one that is you know it, it's always done. And so I wanted, to, I wanted there to be something more than just an ex-slave, you know. So this character, for me, I based him on a character called uh, Black Caesar. Black Caesar was a real character, a real pirate that lived in that time and that was worked alongside uh, Blackbeard and was a, 
was a, a pirate captain in his own right and a fascinating character who was kidnapped off the coast of Africa and uh, eventually went to uh, Florida and the, uh, the boat that they were uh, uh, riding on was, uh, was, uh, um, it was blown over by a storm but he and one other managed to escape and then they became pirates all along the Florida Keys. And uh, he, became, he got a prolific reputation for himself and was very well, well respected. So I, I brought some of that psychological knowledge into him. So the idea of Mr. Scott being born a slave for me wasn't, wasn't an aspect at all because I felt that mentally if you were born a slave you had a very different sort of sh shift about you. So I wanted him to be a, somebody who had probably at the age of 15, 16 was taken and, uh, and uh, you know, was, was from a very prominent family on the west coast of Africa, was taken and uh, was thrust into this world which is, uh, you know, partly why I kept the, the scars on his face and that sort of thing. So that was the story that I wanted to, 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 to bring. Um, and I brought that into the world of, of him and his relationship with that family and, 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 uh, and, and with Eleanor, which is probably why he, he manages to, to get to that sort of level and trust and, 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 and state that he can manage. He can manage. He manages in his own right within this world. He's a man of confidence, nobility, and, uh, and, uh, and, a, and a sense of great self. Well, do you, I mean, because that's, now I want to go to Wikipedia and look that up. Please do, write yeah. Write about it. Yeah, it's um, fascinating. But do you think, I mean, did you talk to the writers about that? Is that something that you could see them bringing at, even more aspects of in later in season three? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah, uh, I did talk to them about it. And, um, you know, one lives in hope that, that's, that, that, they, that they caught some of that. I can't give away any spoilers, but... Um, so yeah, and for me, it's very important. You know, that, that, as I said, that that narrative of, of just you know characters of African descent just being slaves during this particular period, just because it's a period piece, you know, doesn't necessarily for me. I, I you know, it, it's it's a done and tried narrative, and that we have a bigger history than that. And I think bringing these people uh, and understanding the historical context uh, that uh, Africans or African characters uh, during that period was is, is very important. I mean, I, one of the aspects that I found was something like 30 to 40 percent of the pirates during that time were were of African descent. You know, so and there were a few uh, uh, black pirate captains, and uh, you know, and they were some of the bravest. Uh, um, they were some of the bravest uh, um, pirates because because they had to win. Otherwise, they were sold back into slavery. So they were the, some of the first over the vanguard. Uh, they were some of the first to lead the attacks. They were, you know, some of the fiercest uh, uh, soldiers. Um, like Joshua. Yeah. Joshua. Yes, exactly. The, the, the you know, Richard, they were real yeah. sort of powerhouses within themselves because, of, obviously, you know, the, the, they were a life of relative freedom or, or back to slavery. Yeah, we, we we talked about this earlier with some of the other casts about women <clears throat> and women going into piracy and or even living here and having more mm. more freedom. Um, I'm curious to the when everyone's on the ship. I mean, is there sort of a crew bonding that happens? This certainly has been like because I I only came back into the ship, um, it's, you know, towards the end of the second season, mm. and I noticed actually that there's all this bonding had sort of happened and all these new, the, the crewmen. Um, that have become more prominent characters. Um, yeah, and it's become like a real group environment, and especially now we're shooting season three. I find that even more. And it's really great. It's really nice to have all these, these crewmen. You really feel like you're part of a crew now. Because in the first season, it felt like there was a lot of extras. And, uh, and then the, the key characters, sort of like, I think in season one, really, it was sort of like... De Groot. Yeah, De Groot, mm. De Frayne. Yeah. Um, and then now there's like a whole band of brothers, which is really great. And there's this kind of bond now, it's, it's brilliant. Well, and I'd love for both of you guys to talk about how your relationship with Flint changes over the season. Uh, shall I start with that one? You want to start, yeah, because okay. those changes big time. So. Um, so yeah, I mean, as I come back into it, I mean, I think um, an audience might be thinking that I'm going to come in, spill the beans of what went down and, uh, and then have my my dirty way with him, shall we say. <laughs> um, and uh, he's, I think I like to think that uh, Billy is, is cleverer than that and he plays a smarter game. And I think he's playing the long game. You know, I think he's uh, looking ahead and thinking what he has to do to survive for now. And uh, that is to keep Flint closer. Um, and I think he just likes to think he can keep an eye on him. And I think he's, he's no like He used to see Flint as um, a superior and I think he now sees him as on a level and he doesn't, he won't let him get ahead of him, he won't let him um, go behind his back. He, he's aware of what he's like, he doesn't have to trust him, he can just be aware of him. But as well, Flint knows that he needs Billy on his side because he has the men. So I think, 
yeah, it's a very interesting dynamic, I think, for the both of them this season. Mm. And I think with uh, Scott, I mean, we're both men of the world, really, and we both have a, a, a great understanding of, of, of our responsibilities. Uh, there's a, Scott has a very big responsibility, um, which we don't know yet, but it, he does. And, um, and uh, I think there's a mutual respect between the two. I wouldn't say that admiration, but there's certainly a mutual respect and a, a mutual understanding that uh, they need to do what they need to do. The two men that know that understand that, and I think from 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 Scott's point of view, maybe from a more, uh, maybe from a less uh, a, a confrontational perspective, but he will get what he needs out of the situation in the way that he needs it. How much research did you guys do into the politics of the time? Because that, that I really find that fascinating. Yeah, definitely, it's like yeah, a it really is. fascinating yeah. part of it. And um, probably the thing that I've learned most from doing this show is that side of things because I had no idea before starting this that that was how in-depth it was. Um, so yeah, I mean, I before I didn't do, because uh, my character didn't delve into the politics side of things, but I think what I, Billy has um, is he has to truly believe in the pirate cause and what it stands for. And I think Billy, more than anyone, when he's taken that oath, it means something. And I think that's what I like about Billy is that he's, he's, he's true to the pirate cause. Um, and more than anything, the band of brothers around him. So, um, yeah, the way, the way the politics work and the way that, you know, things like the pardons, um, as, a, as an appealing thing to, to Billy, he's like, I, I, have, I have more to give than to just take pardons, you know, because it mm -hmm. means so much more. And I think with Scott, you know, the, 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 this whole world has, a, for me, with the, the, the egalitarian nature of this world it was very interesting and, you know, I'm not sure how much he would know of the, well, he's, he's a man of the world, so, you know, obviously he reached out and understands the politics of, uh, of, of, of the new world, of the, of the colonial powers coming in and trying to occupy, but, uh, uh, you know, the world that he's existed in, he understands that this, it, there's, a, there's an egalitarian nature to it, that, uh, you know, that if you are worth your place in this particular world by deed and, 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 and word, then, you know, you will, you will, you will be respected. And I think, the, you know, for, for, for Scott, that's a very important uh, area for him to understand, for him to acknowledge, and for him to be able to play with. Well, it's, you know, it's really interesting, um, his relationship with Eleanor and how he sort of is a father figure, but he knows, because it, it's that sort of society, he knows what he can say and what he can't say. Yeah, yeah. but it's also political. It's not, you know, for me, it's more, of a, I think for Scott, it's not the, you know, it's more, it's politics. So it's the politics of knowing what what you want to say and what and what you don't want to say more than what you can what he is allowed to and not. And I don't think he's that sort of man. I mean, he will say what he needs to say. He he may, he will do it in a more tactful way. But it's not that he he's allowed to or he's permitted to say this or not. He's a man of himself, and this world has allowed him to be a man of of, of uh, you know a man of, him, of of a worldly man, a man of, of himself. So uh, yeah, yeah. And I have to ask about the stunts because we've heard about the boot camp hmm. and I think we're going to see that. So how, how rough is it to shoot this show? Um, the preparation to shoot is harder oh, than the yeah. actual shooting. It's like training for, um, we always said like when we're doing boot camp or when we're doing the training, it's like you feel like an athlete because um, you know, you're training for a specific thing, whether you train for a fight and stuff like you go through hell in the training and you have to you know, blood, sweat and tears through the training. And then when you get onto it, you're prepared and you're ready to do it. So the actual making of the show is you feel ready for it. That's the whole idea of the training, I suppose. So that you don't feel when you get on there, like, oh, what yeah. the hell am I doing? Or I'm gassing because I'm knackered from trying to do a fight scene. Yeah. So you're fully ready for it. So uh, yeah, but the prep of it is, uh, especially the boot camp. The boot camp was three very hard weeks of, of training. Um, and yeah, we went through it a little bit, but yeah. it, it prepares you for this. Yeah, I agree with you. I mean, definitely. You know, the prep is much more, it's, it's harder sometimes than the actual reality of being on set and doing the fights, you know, because there's always stop and take. And they, these guys, I think you guys did three weeks. I did a week of, of boot camp and it was, I was, you know, I realized how unfit I was afterwards. So it's been really good, but it's also been really, really good being able to do that prep because it's meant that when you come on set, you're not, you know, you're not exhausted, you're not falling over, you're not, you're not, uh, you're not getting injured because you're, you're, you're too tired at take 10 or whatever mm. it is, you know? 
And I have to ask about the costumes because it, it always sort of surprises me that pirates would choose a leather jacket <laughs> yeah. in Nassau. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. How difficult it is, is it to shoot and fight in that, especially in heat down here? Uh, yeah, well, I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm never, they, they only put me in an episode one of season one, and then I don't think I'm ever in a jacket again. Yeah, no, my you torture think, jacket. Yeah. And, and I got this quickly out of that. I got this big, long, yeah, you got big, big coat, and yeah, so, yeah, and it is, it's, 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 it's hot out there, you know, when it, especially during, you know, when, when we get into the middle of February and it gets really, really hot, which is, would have been like that in Nassau, so it's hard, but, um, you know, yeah, I think they must have, you know, got used to it, and uh, yeah, which is what you know, you get conditioned to it, and uh, which is what we have, and so it makes it a lot, it makes it hard but easy. <laughs> yeah. Well, finally, I have to ask you about filming here in Cape Town and what that's been like. Um, well, for me, so it was a whole new experience when I first came here, and uh, I love it. It wasn't what I was expecting at all. I wasn't expecting it, A, to be as beautiful as it is, um, but it's just a really nice place to film. You know, everyone's really friendly here, and the, the crews are really skilled, you know, everyone who does a job here, like, well, I remember walking on the set the first sort of week being here in season one and thinking, God, everyone's, it's like a really well-oiled machine already, you know, everyone's doing what they're supposed to do, and it's just really good. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's a great experience, it's really good, but you, you know. Yeah, I mean, I've filmed here, I've filmed here several, several times before I used to live here, so it's home from home for me, and it's been great, for me, it's been great coming back, I mean, I see a lot of old uh, faces and people that I've worked with on the crew, and, you know, the crews, for me, you know, I've worked all over the world, and to me, they're second to none here, you know, and they're, they're not only the, their work ethic, but the, just the way they relate and their friendliness, and, uh, so I really enjoy coming back to, to Cape Town, and it's a and it's a beautiful city to, to work in, and uh, you know people love the idea of film here. You know, there's the you know the, the, the man in the street loves the idea of the of, 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 of things being filmed here. Everybody asks you about the set as you you know you know the, what's that thing on the end too? You know, and uh, so it's really uh, it's yeah it's great filming in South Africa, very special place. Awesome. Well, thank you guys. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.